What is up? <laughs> what is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. So this is college prep episode nine. If you haven't seen the first nine episodes of this series, I'll link the playlist down below. So definitely check those out. If you are new here, my name is Rachel. I am a rising senior at UC Berkeley, double majoring in cognitive science and legal studies. Hey everybody, I'm Catherine. I'm gonna be a fourth year or senior in the fall at UVA, which is the University of Virginia. So I'm majoring in economics and global public health. I was pre-med, I may still be pre-med, TBD, but I'm gonna do a master's in public health. And so we're friends from high school, so we're both out of state for the colleges that we go to. So I feel like we have an interesting point of view on things. So that's why we're going to be talking about what we wish we knew freshman year. First thing that we're going to talk about is imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is basically when you're in a situation that you deserve to be in and you've achieved all of your goals and you've reached a certain point because of your hard work. But for some reason, you don't believe that you deserve to be there. So that's the thing that a lot of college students experience, especially their first year because it is such an adjustment. For example, like when I went to UVA my first year, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't deserve to be here. All of these people are so smart. And that's that's another thing in college, like you may find yourself among a group of people that are just like so intelligent and hardworking and it's like very intimidating, but yeah. it doesn't mean that you don't deserve to be there because the college or whatever other entity has identified you, identified you for a reason. I definitely feel like it's very difficult your first year, especially to feel like you belong at the school that you're going going to especially after you get back your first exam or you turn in like an essay or a quiz and the grade isn't something maybe you've ever seen before in high school so like a C or something and then you're like oh my god like then you start feeling bad about yourself like oh like I'm less intelligent than my peers all my peers are so successful in what they do they're all getting such high grades and then it's really difficult not to push that back on yourself so I feel like your first year especially you don't want to compare yourself to other people because then that's where you get into trouble with the imposter syndrome because everyone is there for a reason maybe you messed up your first exam but that just shows you that you have to change something with your studying everybody really does have different strengths and you're gonna hear that a lot so that you know it's probably nothing new but I can just think of a few friends that I know that are brilliant in certain subject areas and they'll get like a pluses in all of those classes and I'm like wow like I I'm not doing as well as this person in this particular class but then I realized like, the opposite in terms of like subject material and like the type of material those people might not perform as well as me it's not about comparing yourself but it just goes to show that it's okay if like one area is not your strength because you will find your strength and that's the beauty of going to college and being able to take different types of classes if you want more on the whole imposter syndrome topic I also have a video which I'll link down below like why college makes you hate yourself which I talk a little bit more about like UC Berkeley and imposter syndrome at Berkeley so you can definitely check that out if you want. So the next thing that you will experience your freshman year is changing friends. I think there is some negative like stereotypes around you'll meet your best friend for life the first day of college or your first day of orientation and sure yes like this happens for people and this is the prime time your first few weeks of college to meet people in either classes your dorm or at orientation but if these people that you meet your first first few weeks of school aren't the people that you either a get along with really well or b are bad influences for you it is 100% okay to drop them and find new friends I feel like some people get so stuck in the mindset that like they need to be best friends with the people in their orientation or they need to be best friends with the people on their floor you shouldn't feel stuck with the people that you meet your first few weeks of school maybe you'll join a club and you'll find best friends in that club it's totally okay to not be friends with those people if you don't get along. If you do, that's great. You have a bunch of friends. Definitely the first couple weeks of school, that is the time to be very outgoing. Um, and that's kind of nerve wracking. That doesn't mean that those are gonna be the best, most supportive people for you that you meet during that period of time. And I can also say that some of the best friends that I have at college are also a year younger than me. So I didn't meet those people until my second year of college. You're gonna meet a lot of people while you're there. Some of these schools have tens of thousands of people there it's yeah. not like high school your high school might have been really small and you're thinking oh I, I can't meet enough people who have the same interest well in college there are so many people you will find your niche you will find a group of people the third thing that we're gonna talk about is all the opportunities that you have in college so 
this is joining clubs, joining different sports groups, maybe even like traveling abroad and doing all those types of things. The first week that I was at UVA, there was this enormous club fair and all of the upperclassmen gathered all over the lawn and there were just tables and tables and tables, probably at least a hundred. I think there's like a couple hundred different clubs at UVA. So similar to UVA, Berkeley also has a super big club fair at the beginning of each semester where literally like thousands of clubs line Upper Sprout and Lower Sprout on campus. Like you want to go there and you want to talk to the people, the older students who are in the club. You want to go and like put your email down. You want to go to the info sessions and be able to talk to members and be like, what does this club actually do? Is this something that I'm interested in? Is this something that I did in high school? Or is this something that's brand new to me and I just want to try it for college? A lot of colleges, you know, have the same situation. There's loads of clubs and loads of things that you can get involved in. A lot of people like to wait till their second semester until they're settled and that's completely okay. But I think from my experience, I would suggest trying to join maybe just like one group from the beginning because it allows you to meet more people and really span out and that can be what makes college more welcoming and more comfortable for you from the get-go. But I also would warn you against signing up for every single club that's there. I put my email down for probably like 20 to 30 different oh clubs because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to hear more about it but then you're getting all these emails so make sure that you're selective. Don't overcommit yourself and by giving your email you're not committing yourself you're just hoping to learn more information but that's something also to be wary of I think something that is annoying I feel like at Berkeley for a lot of clubs you do have to apply to the club and then the club is very very restrictive on the members that they let in so it's a very low acceptance rate which I find very annoying because it's something different than high school where like everyone who wanted to be in the club could be in the club versus Berkeley it's like only six or ten out of like the 500 people that are applying actually get into the club and I'm like <laughs> GG that's great um, so I think that's one of the downfalls which like Catherine said you should start the fall semester of your freshman year even though like yes you are getting adjusted to the school but that's how you get your roots and I know some of the clubs they don't even accept freshmen so if you go in your freshman year and then at least you have those connections to the older members the president vice presidents of the club when you hit second semester or even sophomore year depending on when like applications go and what age of students they let into the club then at least you have those roots placed and I joined clubs my freshman year and it turned out totally fine like my grades didn't take a hit but then I found a cool group of friends yeah so UVA also does have a Ugh. lot of clubs that you have to apply for so annoying <laughs> And you know, even if that doesn't work out and you're still looking for ways to get involved, you can volunteer. So UVA has this thing called Madison House through which a lot of volunteering is organized. That doesn't mean though that you can't go directly to the organization that Madison House volunteers are volunteering for and ask for that opportunity. But that being said, have enough confidence in yourself yeah. to apply to a club. And if you don't get in, like at least you can say you've tried and then you can apply again. But if you don't take those chances, then you'll never know in the first place. I think applying to those exclusive clubs like even though I didn't get into them it's a really good way to improve your interview skills because I was invited to like the group interview the individual interview where you'd have to do like market sizing questions for business clubs and stuff like that so I feel like at least I got the experience for interviewing and how to work in a group interview and move past those levels if I never even applied or if I thought like oh I'm not good enough to even apply or what are the chances that I'm going to get in I shouldn't apply so at least I got some like tangible skills out of it so the next thing that you're going to experience your freshman year is potentially being in a relationship with another person. This might be your first relationship ever, which is normal for a lot of people, or this might just be another relationship in your step towards finding love. <laughs> <laughs> Something to note is that relationships in college can take a lot of different forms. People just generally come in with different expectations. So I know for me, I really wanted to meet somebody and like date them. People tend to have different expectations and a lot of people don't want to date, <laughs> especially at the beginning of college. I think that the most important thing is communication and being honest to yourself and honest to other people, regardless of where you are on that spectrum of like what your expectations are. And I always say, say what you mean and mean what you say, because if you can be honest 
and clear with another person, then they should be honest and clear with you and nobody's feelings should get hurt. I feel like something that you should think about before going to school or while you're at college is what do you want in a relationship? Because maybe you want a relationship relationship where you are fully committed to one another. Maybe you're okay with you seeing other people or maybe you're okay with like no strings attached in a relationship kind of thing. So I feel like knowing what you want and being able to verbalize that just so that no Nobody in the relationship gets like persuaded to do stuff that they don't want to do or that they're not comfortable with in the relationship and you shouldn't have to change for another person and I feel like <laughs> I don't know dating in college is just hard <laughs> it's, yeah it's just really hard to find a good person but I guess they're out there somewhere we'll find them someday you know the biggest thing is don't sacrifice like your own personal success for somebody else because if you don't have the time to date you don't got the time go focus build your own future before you build someone else's that's something that is difficult especially your freshman year is like you're going to a new school you're meeting a bunch of new people you're joining new clubs and in addition you're going to put a relationship on that as well you need to have time for a relationship otherwise personally i feel like it won't end well because if the two people in the relationship don't give equal amounts in like their time and stuff like that like you're going to have issues in the relationship a lot of people like to say that being in a relationship is like taking a four unit class because of the amount of time that you have to put into like hanging out with the other person talking with the other person also if the relationship isn't going well and you see signs of like unhealthy behavior within the relationship I feel like it's definitely okay to end things and I feel like you shouldn't be in something that isn't going to end in happiness you shouldn't force yourself or the other person shouldn't force themselves to be in something that is like a dead end or like is an unhealthy relationship that being said when you go to college you're kind of like 18 to 22 kind of range and if you want to get married if that's your thing then you got time so if you meet somebody and you're not like super happy and you're just kind of there because it's comfortable you know do yourself a favor and give yourself the respect to change that and bring that time back into your own hands this is our video about things that you're going to experience your first year of college so let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if you're older than a first year in college and you have other tips to help anyone else who's watching this video make sure you like and subscribe and if you want to see Catherine in more videos and we can also do <laughs> self-care and high school friend videos if you all want so let us know in the comments below but thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time